Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. The last video I made went over surprisingly well for the most part, and so I've decided to continue my YouTube journey with a video I've wanted to make for quite a long time. A video detailing the epic saga that was my experience working for a popular Christian bookstore and gift shop. Again, this has nothing to do with my last video, but I never promised consistency or formula, so I'm free to post what I wish. Thank you for understanding. Also, I'm not sick anymore so enjoy my normal voice. Short introduction, I was a devout Christian for the vast majority of my life. I have since deconstructed and deconverted and no longer identify with any particular religion, but I grew up in an extremely religious household and believed wholeheartedly that any career path I went down needed to sort of intersect with the straight and narrow. Thus, my first real job, which I started immediately after I got my license and graduated high school, was at this aforementioned popular Christian retailer. I will not be naming this retailer, though I'm sure some of you will be able to figure it out. The first thing I want to mention is that, though retail is retail and some things remain the same anywhere you go, the Christian retail employee culture is radically different from, say, the employee culture at Walmart. Firstly, you would not get hired if you were not a Christian, and sometimes you would not get hired if you were a Christian, but not the right kind of Christian. I sat in on interviews where the applicant identified as a Christian and was very enthusiastic about it even, but we turned them down because their testimony was not convincing enough to my manager. And this was just allowed. This was par for the course. And some of you may be saying, isn't that some kind of discrimination? And while the answer to that is definitively yes, this particular retail chain was also classified as a religious nonprofit, and therefore, I guess, they were allowed to decide that someone wasn't Christian enough to hire. Um, in some ways, though, this might be considered a good thing, because I don't think anyone who didn't share the precise ideals of the Southern Baptist Convention would have had the mental fortitude to endure the ways in which we operated. We prayed during staff meetings, and we did devotionals every morning before we opened and each night before we closed. The devotionals, by the way, were required reading, and you can imagine how fun it was to finish counting the drawer at 11 p.m. at night and then realize you have to spend another 20 minutes reading and discussing a Bible passage before you're allowed to go home and go to bed. Our store was fairly large, and we sold a wide array of products. We sold hundreds of different Bibles, of course, books of every genre, movies, music, and a ton of assorted gifts and merchandise, such as jewelry, home decor, and those little willow tree sculptures. Uh, there was even a whole kids section in the back of the store with toys, games, and collectibles, including a TV which played classic VeggieTales on loop, and I'm not going to lie, this was my favorite section of the store, and I would routinely organize the children's section so that I could listen to silly songs with Larry. That's not to mention the dishware, wall art, calendars, coloring books, and candles. Basically, if you could slap a Bible verse on it, package it, and sell it to middle-aged moms shopping for themselves and their families, we sold it. This, of course, led to some of the more interesting products that you could find around the store. Just a few of my personal favorites include testaments, Christian breath mints for those whose stank breath could not be extinguished by any secular alternative, this retro Jesus Reese's t-shirt, which I believe was featured in Jesus Camp, and most notably, this Minecraft Bible, which I once heard a customer criticize because it was the NIRV instead of the KJV, and not because it was a Minecraft Bible. For what it's worth, though, we were fairly popular. We had a loyal clientele, and training for sales associates heavily emphasized customer-centric service, which meant that in any situation, no matter how absolutely insane, you had to be able to smile and extend God's grace to customers. And so I learned very quickly to smile through a whole lot of insanity. You might have seen those TikToks where it's like, Yeah, there were a few of those, but honestly, that only scratches the surface of the absolute madness that went down. Most people weren't rude, really. Some of them were just completely out of their minds. I once had a lady over the phone searching for a CD that we didn't have in stock, and when I offered to Google the artist for her to see if I could find the CD elsewhere, she became extremely offended because Google was an instrument of the Antichrist. 
There were several instances of church groups and rogue self-proclaimed missionaries hiding anti-abortion tracts and propaganda around the store, which might be the most glaring example of preaching to the choir that I have ever seen. But the one that stands out most in my mind still makes me laugh to this day. See, we played a lot of contemporary Christian music in my store, and if you've ever listened to contemporary Christian music, you know it all sounds the same and is entirely inoffensive, largely because there's very little substance to it. Well, once I was ringing up this elderly couple, and the little old lady objected to the fact that we were playing a fairly upbeat track by Mandisa. She and her husband were upset that we, as a Christian organization, would be playing this, quote, club music. And she was so haunted by the vision of all the kids in church, quote, shaking their butts to Mandisa that she began to openly weep at point of sale. For reference, this is what the track we were playing sounds like. Wake up to a brand new day. Now, anyone with less than stellar customer-centric service training might have been rendered speechless by this situation, but I, with my exceptional adaptability and deep desire to not get fired for laughing at a crying old lady, simply smiled and nodded sympathetically and assured the couple that I would look into it. This was satisfactory, it seems, because she thanked me and they left with their little communion wafers and bottle of Welch's Light Concord Grape Juice, which, if you didn't know, was the actual wine used by Jesus in the Bible. If everything I've recounted to you so far sounds incredibly cringeworthy, rest assured it was, but the job wasn't actually all that bad. I was paid pretty well, I liked my co-workers, and we did have a lot of fun. We had a lot of events throughout the year, our most popular being our Christmas event, of course, but more specifically, there was about a three-week period during the summer when all the local churches would host their annual VBS programs. And this was our jam. For those of you who didn't grow up in the Bible Belt, VBS stands for Vacation Bible School, and it's a major week-long event held by churches as a sort of evangelistic effort targeted at kids and families. Uh, they chose a theme, which in the time I worked in Christian retail alone, spanned from jungle safari to tropical island to the Wild West, and orchestrate numerous classes, games, dances, and activities around this theme. It's a big deal in evangelical circles, and even if you didn't attend church regularly as a kid, chances are you would at some point be invited to VBS by one of your church-going friends. My store just so happened to be the biggest distributor of VBS programs worldwide, and so we as sales associates underwent special training during these seasons to effectively sell these programs. Our in-store events during these times were the best because it meant hosting fun activities instead of stocking inventory. And lots of free cookies. But I don't think anything will ever be able to compare to the VeggieTales meet and greet. See, we were informed by corporate that there was going to be an event wherein children would be able to meet Bob and Larry, the stars of VeggieTales, at our store. We were understandably very excited about this, but you can imagine our surprise when we were subsequently informed that we, that is, our store, would be providing the actors to play Bob and Larry. Two very lucky store employees would be donning the vegetable flesh of Bob the Tomato and Larry the Cucumber. And I was so in. I volunteered to be Bob, and guys... They let me be Bob. Now, you have to understand that the costumes we wore for this event were not your typical mascot-esque uh, fursuits, for lack of a better word. These were massive, inflatable costumes with, like, a motor strapped to the back that kept you cool and full of air while you were inside. Visibility was extremely limited, and mobility was near impossible. In being Bob the Tomato, I was unable to do much more than wave my hands, which resulted in me slapping more than one innocent child across the face as I tried desperately to give hugs and accept gifts. One well-meaning little girl tried to give me a small Bob the Tomato plush doll, and because I couldn't actually close my bob hands, I appeared to callously drop it onto the floor, and then, because I could only flail about helplessly, raise my hands as if to say, Oh well. Luckily, the children didn't seem to mind that much, and it was a very successful venture. Big Idea owes me a bonus for my stunning and accurate portrayal of Bob the Tomato, and that is a hill that I am more than willing to take up my cross and die on. 
No offense, JC. So yeah, sometimes crazy, always interesting, and never dull, my time as a Christian bookstore employee lasted about three years and was, for all intents and purposes, my introduction to the working world. Our store actually went out of business in 2019, and I put in my letter of resignation about two months before we closed. When I left, my coworkers threw me a going away party, uh, complete with balloons, cupcakes, and a prayer circle. There's a lot that could be said about the commodification of religion and the prophesied death of the brick-and-mortar bookstore, but I won't get into all of that here. I kind of just wanted this video to be a more lighthearted look into my past. Maybe someday I'll talk about the things I didn't like, the practices I didn't agree with, and even the potentially harmful things that the company promoted. Ultimately, though, I walked out of my last shift knowing that whatever came next couldn't possibly be compared to my time there. And I was right. It was a very unique job, and even though I've changed dramatically as a person from the time I started there and would never have been hired for the same position today, I'm still thankful for the experience and look back on it fondly. If nothing else, I do miss those free cookies. Which, now that I think about it, were definitely supposed to be for the customers. Oops. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I have no idea what I'm going to do next, but if you would like to find out for yourself, you can smash that subscribe button and turn on notifications and all that good stuff. I'm just joking. You don't have to do that. But yeah, if you relate to anything I said in this video, if you too once worked at a Christian bookstore and gift shop, comment below and we can exchange experiences. Kind of like trading Pokemon cards, but not too much like Pokemon because Pokemon are evil and of the devil. Thank you again. Bye.